What's up guys, I'm Jesse Kazam and welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, we're going to be diving into a few tips for playing as a duo or a squad and Escape from Tarkov. Uh, playing with a group all the way up to a team of five can be so much fun and can create some crazy moments in this game. Uh, but it definitely presents itself with its own set of challenges. Uh, and you definitely need to kind of alter your strategy at least a little bit to make playing with a squad the most effective it can be. So we're going to dive into a few of my tips for that. Uh, I stream Escape from Tarkov a few days a week. All my links will be down below if you want to come and stop by and say hey. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first tip is just going to be learn the callouts. So there isn't like a predetermined like callouts for each thing on uh, each map. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the maps that if you want to like a reference or a guide, a lot of the maps, uh, at least the website that I use kind of has some of the callouts on the actual maps that you can look on online. But it doesn't really matter what you call locations. It's super important that you and your teammates have the same verbiage for positions on the map. Uh, there is nothing worse than when an enemy engages you and you're all now trying to figure out where that enemy is and somebody calls out something like spine or scav ambush or something. And if people don't know where that is, that's when things start to fall apart. Communication gets crazy. People start to hesitate because they don't want to team kill and you can die. So having some consistent verbiage that you know that your whole squad knows that you can call something out even, hey, I think I see something over there or I heard something over here. The whole unit can now, even if it's just a duo, shift their attention in the right direction or you can use those callouts for when you're flanking or really anything. So getting on the same page about learning some callouts, you can start with just high level, just big points on the map. And then if you like really start to enjoy playing certain maps together, um, really whittling down and having something for as many places as possible just means that communication is going to be even more clear and you're going to be able to um, kind of make the moves that you want to make with your squad. The second tip I have is know what each other looks like. Um, this can actually be super helpful. Uh, every time I run like a duo raid, one of the first things I do is I'll just turn and look at what gear my teammate is wearing. Now, for sure, there is a possibility that, you know, if I look, okay, you've got this helmet and I could see an enemy with that helmet as well. But by looking at like, okay, M4, you've got an Alton helmet and you're a bear and you've got the flannel on. Even if I don't remember every single bit of that, the backpack is another thing too. You've got a tri-zip, what size that is and stuff like that. Because once again, one of the absolute worst things that can happen as a duo or a squad or the worst thing that can happen is a team kill, right? And I have found when playing in a duo, especially, or even squads, hesitating because I'm wondering if that's my teammate is an absolute, just like an awful thing. Um, so because it can get you killed if it's not your teammate, um, or if you don't know what the person looks like and you're not sure where they are and you see somebody up there and you just take the shot. So every time I run into a raid, it's going to be harder with a bigger squad. Um, but you totally can. But every time I hop into a raid, I look and say, okay, what are you wearing? And then we can do our thing. So that way, if we get separated in a firefight or if anything happens, um, hopefully I can get that. Uh, less hesitation in the moment where I need to shoot at somebody uh, and potentially drop an enemy. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is try to, uh, whatever your strategy is around, like if you guys like to split up, stick together, try not to stick too close together. So I've definitely been in situations before where um, we were moving down a hallway, maybe on the shoreline resort, and we're kind of doing our thing, doing our thing. And if you line yourselves up, you can really easily get mowed down the whole duo, the squad, or even a collateral kill. Um, I even had a moment where I went to the, my friend in front of me ducked. And as soon as he ducked, an enemy that was engaging at him shot, missed him, and I was directly behind him and died. Uh, and that was a situation where we both would have made it out if we weren't kind of lined up. Um, and that works. That rule applies not just lining up, obviously, for like collateral hits, but even just sticking really close together puts you at risk of grenade throws, killing a bunch of you, um, or even just being spotted as a group, especially if you have like three or four, um, keeping a little bit of distance. That way, if somebody spots you, they might say, hey, oh, I, it's a two man. I can engage them 
and little do they know there's one more or two more or something like that so you're keeping a little bit of an element of surprise when you're out in the open and you're avoiding multi kills when you're close together now the next tip i have is suppression so this is invaluable once again whether you're just playing as a duo or all the way up to a huge squad um if i'm engaging with somebody and i can call out exactly where this enemy is and my teammate is either trying to figure out where they are or get close to me or something like that me just sending shots down range and suppressing my enemy behind hardcover gives my teammate the time to flank get a better angle there are countless situations where forcing somebody to remain behind hardcover forcing somebody to uh, stick to a position if you know they're trying to flee can so often give you or your teammate the time to get to a better position and just completely just destroy them without it having to be a fight where there's return fire uh, so using suppression in a multitude of ways um, can be really really helpful it can help like stall an engagement just long enough for even you to reposition get closer get farther away um, or even not end the engagement but it gives you an extra second to communicate where the person is to your teammate um, it can be a really really helpful tool the next tip I have is try to use complementary kits. So this is this affords you um, an advantage that solo players don't have is that you can run somebody with a kit that's really close quarters combat, maybe for um, hallways or room uh, clearing. So a map like Shoreline is a great example. Way out in the open, you can have so much open space. And then in the resort, there's really tight spaces. So somebody can run a kit with really close quarters combat. Somebody can run a kit with... Uh, long range uh, you can have somebody run a thermal so when you're running a thermal site you know it's really hard to um, the thermals have their drawbacks as well so you might be able to scan and see somebody but if you lose them or if you're trying to communicate to a squad if everyone's got thermals it's kind of hard to figure out whose heat signature is who having somebody with like a valde or a 4x scope and somebody with a thermal those kits complement each other really really well because the thermal person can spot and say hey i can't get an angle on this guy but i saw him right over there and the person without the thermal can actually see the cover the buildings what's going on where the person is was it just a scav or was that an actual pmc so all sorts of stuff like that um, using complementary kits all the way down to your armor your bags your rigs everything uh, can really help um, make the raid move in a way that you want it to move and the last tip and this is probably the most important thing when it comes to duo trio squad play is keep your comms clean uh, so it can be really really hard especially in bigger groups if y'all are trying if y'all are talking or if multiple people are talking or uh, if people are talking over each other to get the information that's needed especially when a firefight happens so in a game like escape from tarkov where you can really quickly just in an instant feel like you saw somebody move left to right over here by that rock or you guys can be moving and instantly get one tapped you have no idea where from there's so many different situations where if comms are already happening if people are already talking if they're telling stories about what happened to them that day or at work it might be really hard for you to interject and say hey i saw somebody right there or if somebody dies and then there's an eruption of comms where people are like where 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 the person who has the information is having a hard time actually getting that information out so um, you know, this is of course all on how serious you want to take the game. If you guys are just there to have fun and meme around, of course, but if you're really looking to survive more encounters as a unit, as a squad, um, I can't stress enough how important just keeping the comms really clean, really simple, really short and effective. Um, and that's a whole nother point is that even if, even if you do have the information and you're, you're the one giving that information out learning how to communicate quickly and not just be like, okay, over there to, to my right, there's a rock and beyond that rock, there's this tree and then this and that being able to kind of, and this just comes with time and playing the game, but being able to um, communicate quickly. Cause that's something that I struggled with a lot is I'm in the heat of the moment of, I see somebody and I really want this kill or I really want to engage in this PVP action. I have a really hard time translating my thoughts to words. So my teammate is like, hey, I want to help. I don't know what's going on. And I there's just this disconnect between my head and my mouth. So that's another part of keeping the, the comms really clean is learning how to communicate 
a really concisely and effectively, even if it's let's back off and then I'll tell you what's going on. If you know that there's just too much going on to communicate it. Um, so stuff like that can really, really help keep uh, the raid moving in the direction you want to move and keep you guys alive. So that's it for this one. Those are the tips we have. Uh, learn the call outs. Uh, know what you or each other looks like. Stick together, but not too close together. Uh, suppression is key. Keep the comms really, really clean and try and complement each other with your kits. Uh, I hope that this helped. I hope that if, if some of this stuff was obvious to you guys or whatever, that some of the other information is maybe something you hadn't thought of. I hope that this can help you guys as a unit uh, feel more confident going into your raids and that it ultimately leads to you guys being more successful. Thank you all so much as always for taking the time to check out this video. Uh, please drop a comment down below if you have any questions about this video or if there's any guides you'd like to see me make here in the future. If you enjoyed the video, think about dropping a thumbs up or subscribing for more content like this. I'm always trying to make content that shortens the learning curve of Escape from Tarkov and gets you in your raids having fun as soon as possible. Uh, so thanks again for stopping by and I will see you all on the next one.